What up, nerds in the simulation? And happy new year here from uh, myself, my family, everyone involved here at 4256. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of us patriots worldwide as we uh, watch, watch uh, Benghazi Part 2 unfold right in front of our fake lying mainstream media eyes as what austere scholars storm the gates of our embassy again Benghazi Part 2 except we sent in a hundred marines this time except we sent in Apache helicopters except law and order and the rule of order and order itself will be restored and that's the thing that we should learn no matter what is happening with Bill de Blasio's New York or, uh, or not Chris Cuomo, Mario Cuomo's New York, where there are bail laws. Folks, if you commit a series of crimes, you no longer have to post cash bail. I love it. In fact, if you have skipped bail 10 times and they arrest you, they can't hold you on bail. Do you see the issue here? And in fact, I love as soon as the story goes, we have a woman who runs out, slaps three Jews across the face while yelling, fuck Jews, and then gets arrested and then is released and also given a debit card, also given a cell phone and a free way to get a metro card so she can go around the city and improve her life whereas the next day at 9 15 in the morning she strikes somebody else a second assault in two days four people assaulted they should have had her overnight is that enough no blatant kidnappings now we're seeing people because look the human trafficking has been shut down folks so the absolute on the rise kidnappings are going to come front and center especially here in bill de blasio's new york where the there is no punishment for crime. That's all there is. So on that same day when we had this lady slap people up, we had another guy fight the cops. And that guy fought the cops. And meanwhile, he's got the one cop on the ground. He's trying to grab his gun. He's trying to choke him out. The other cops behind him tapping him on the back. Sir, sir, please stop. They arrest that guy. They send him down to the station. And guess what happens? He doesn't want to be fingerprinted. And because he doesn't want to be fingerprinted, they put him in front of the judge who lets him out on the streets, folks, within four hours of assaulting two police officers. You want to have a machete attack where a gentleman comes in and, well, according to the mainstream media, it's a knife attack and there are stabbings involved. We don't know why a person would do such a thing. They don't want to say that it's a machete attack. They don't want to say that it's slashings. They need to downplay it. And of course, what did all the blue checks on Twitter when Ice-T was not lighting them up and telling them to suck it? They blame it all. A black guy using a machete to hack up Jews on Hanukkah, folks. White supremacy. That's what they blame it on, white supremacy. And that is the disorder that we are seeing in this country. And it is front and center. And so something that I wanted to discuss today especially uh, since today's, uh, well, the, today's first reading was about the Antichrist, about the many Antichrists, the many Antichrists who rise up, the anti-anointed ones, the anti-Messiah, the anti-rules, the people who want lawlessness. And as they says, they will be temporarily successful until it's shown what exactly they are doing, what they are trying to accomplish. And they're trying to accomplish, they want to accomplish, and in their wanting, and in their trying, and in their disordered thinking where their belief in evil leading good will win, definitely they will lose. And so I wanted to put this whiteboard up today and have you folks uh, look at this as a, uh, it's a uh, ebook that I've been working on, on language and order and simplicity. If you wanted to, well, if you not want to, because it's an abandoning of want, it's an abandoning of trying, it is only your needs, it is only endeavoring through a, well, a, a complex series of ordered events, which will indeed bring the order which is life as it exists around us in nature. So if your nature is to live in a disordered fashion, if to lead with fear, to lead with hatred, to lead with scarcity, then, well, folks, if that's the foundation that you're building your reality on, do not be surprised then that your life would reflect those very things. So here is, is the whiteboard. Lead it off with one of my favorite lines that all language is hypnosis. And as you start to think about that, therein lies the very setup that it is. 
if you want to reject it, if you want to think about it, as first mover, I put it into your world. And now you're on the other side of the tennis ball striking it. And so what we do from this part of all language is hypnosis. We realize that all there is is input and output. There is nothing but order and disorder. So as things are, then so they'll be. Now, if you want to look at the first symbol here, the first symbol, if you see the circle here with the eye on it, okay, behind the circle with the eye, right to the side of it, you see one single dot. Now, mind you, before there were symbols, there were no symbols. That was the order. No symbol, then symbol. The first symbol being a point, being a dot, a single point to denote amount, to denote location. That's how it began by a single point, the same point that is made to make a line, a line that shows direction, a series of dots in procession, a dot that is also circular. Both the dot and the circle have an eternal line that encompasses the outside of it. You know why there's an eye in there? Because a circle is not a circle until it's a circle, much like an impeachment. It is not an impeachment until it's impeached. Are you with me on the same page right now? The second symbol, they believe, was the second dot. Because of gravity, they believe that the symbol was up and down. After that, the symbol beyond that would have been one dot with a dot to its right to show a, well, that's how we get our straight line, which is how we get our up and down line. And mind you, a line is full, a line has a center, a line has depth, capacity, width, and length, those things that existed before time itself. And if you're not in the straightness of the direction, then you're going to go around that path. And in the going around the truth, you will find what? That in your half curvature of a circle, you've broken the eternal circle itself and a curved line not as strong as a straight line. Why did I switch pens? Well, if you were a person that lived in fear and scarcity, you would probably say, oh, because he likes blue, because that's America, because whatever the fuck you were going to make up anyways, which is why we should not care for any of these communists, any of these secularists, or anybody with an opinion that is outside of our very belief systems as believers, as Americans, as patriots with the rule of law in mind, defending the Constitution, that they are the Antichrist themselves. In the same way we would look at the horizon and we would look at it as a series of measure, in the same way we would see the equalness of horizon so much so that we would not argue it. Just like if we both closed our eyes, we would not argue that we were experiencing the blackness. Of course, we know that the horizon is just Horus's risen sun. And there in the equalness, in the not equity, but in equality, again, what do they want to sell us? They want to take our equality that we are all born under the children of God, but then say because of equity that there are certain persons who they all happen to agree with who deserve more than you. And you will be, and we will be, and our families will be the people who it is taken from. They're not going to listen to you. They don't want you alive. They don't want your family alive. They want you dead. They want your freedoms taken away. They want the resources within this homeland to be given to the people that they agree with who also agree that you should be dead, that you should be silenced, that you should be starved, that the very fact that you stand as a believer is antithetical to their reason of being as antichrist themselves as they wage holy war against us. And everybody says, oh, but isn't Christ the right way? How dare that guy pull a gun in church? Folks, we must defend our brothers and sisters, the folks who are in the flock and in the fold. Why are we defending the wolves outside? Those are the people that are coming to get our flock. So as Joe Biden two weeks ago, when he's not getting heckled on the campaign trail, while he's not getting told the what for, when he's not in the middle of a, some glaring error saying something creepy about some, somebody under the age of 15, says, how dare anybody want to bring a gun into a place of worship? And lo and behold, a gentleman walks in who looks very much like the guy who was hacking up the Jews in New York. Oh, I'm sorry, used a knife and was stabbing, according to the mainstream media. Well, here comes this gentleman who walks in and within 20 seconds, 
Six guns are on this guy, and he's dead. But a parishioner died in the defense of uh, the freedom of the other parishioners. And what would have happened had there have been no guns on the ground? Don't you see now that they want you dead? They want you disarmed. This country would never accept socialism. This country will never accept communism. But through liberalism, through these feel-good programs, where any discussion is seen to be a, I don't know, run down the list of 25th Amendment white nationalist or whatever ism they're going to throw at you, except we've already made the decision that we know the game plan. And so you can just blindly look at them and know their time in the barrel is coming and know that that is a absolute truth. So as Joe Biden says, hey, take the guns out. Here's a person defending the people of the, of the parish, the people inside of the congregation, and this gunman, instead of killing who knows how many people, is now dead. And what do they blame that on? I don't know, probably Trump, probably white supremacy, probably what they were going to blame it on anyways, because it does not matter. The truth to them does not matter. They need disorder into this world in order to use the disorder to bring the chaos and within the chaos they can get you to accept something that is not real and if they can get you to accept something that that is not real then from there they can continue to use their language as hypnosis to continue to bring upon this plan to subvert this country's constitution our very freedom our very liberty our first and second amendment rights our fourth amendment rights and all of those things that Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, and Jerry Nadler want to take away from us, that the neocons want to take away from us. Again, a circle's not a circle until it's a circle, and impeachment's not an impeachment until the impeachment and the articles have been sent. And they haven't been sent because they have a garbage case. Again, this is it. And I, that's, I say this is it because it's a triple redundant statement. This. This life that we are in is this very isness that we are existing in. This it that encompasses this, this isness that we are living. Of course, from that word, you can always take the word his for in reference to Christ. Ish, also a reference to the name of Christ. And then, of course, ish with the cross over it, I believe, is the Jesuit logo. And if you want to go into the profane, sure, use the word shit all you want. This is all coming down to quantum computing, artificial intelligence, but then also us to determine the fact that as we judge and as we make judgments upon our reality, we are making an agreement with nature itself to fix things into place. And so a quantum judgment is gonna to explain to us that uh, again, it fixes your agreed to reality. Remember math when we were kids? We were raised on uh, my dear Aunt Sally. Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. We were raised on alphabetical order. We were raised on zero, one, two, three. We were raised on X, Y. We were raised on plus minus. And we were raised on symbol and then different symbol when in reality it was no symbol and then symbol. This comes down to order. It comes down to procession. It comes down to direction. Again, the truth is the end. Anything that is not the truth is an overt lie. Is an overt lie, which if you found your life upon, do not be surprised at the answer you get and the reality and the sum total of your decisions is an answer, but not the answer. And again, so what's the shortest distance to find the truth? Is it the truth itself? It is a straight line. Again, it's the straight line versus the curve line. We have to find out what is, and then it returns to what is. The math equivalent of data, it doesn't matter if it's economics, if it's a diagnosis, loyalty, disorder, emotions, or lack thereof. It is nothing but a math equation. It is nothing of a series, a series of math that explains reality, that explains the chemical balances of your thoughts that explains your very judgments that if you judge in a state of disorder, the math will allow you to do it. In the beginning, you have what? Void. And inside of the void and the vacuum of possibility that existed inside of, uh, well, the reality before God said, let there be light. Well, even in that, even in that void existed capacity. 
existed fullness, existed a center, existed a barrier that absolutely encompassed the entirety of the void, which also has mathematical structure, but is also still zero. And from this zero, God says, let there be light. And from there we have creation and inside of creation, you know what exists across that? From that very dot, that very point of creation still exists fullness, still exists capacity, still exists order, procession and direction. It exists a beginning and because there's a beginning, it exists in an ending, which has already been written. And that's what the anti-messianic folks, the antichrist themselves, as they war together to take this very order from you and put you in a state of disorder, if you have not already made that choice yourself. Today's gospel, I believe it's uh, 1 John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was good, and the word was God. Now Faust says that, no, in the beginning was the, was the deed, was the action. No, no, no. It's the beginning was the word. Secondary to that is your opinion of that word, is a word that you would say in resistance to that word. Because again, this all comes down to order. Zero, one, two, three, A, B, C, D, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. If you ask, then you receive. If you give, then you get. You have silence and then sound, dark and then light. Of course, beginning precedes ending, acceptance, proceeds rejecting and you'll be judged how you love and that's it it's a choice of how you judge because as you judge you will be judged so if you judge reality harshly if you judge reality from a scarcity and a fear standpoint in an evil standpoint then so you shall be judged when it is that time ask what they want you to accept as different think about a person's life who only gets but never gives. Do you see the, the, see the solitude that they would find themselves as? Who only makes sound but never understands, uh, who never understands silence. Who only rejects but never accepts. Who sees someone with a red hat and immediately rejects their very present even though the things they are saying are universally accepted. But in their culture of fear, in their culture of rejection, in leading with the disordered choice of no proceeding yes, in this case, they want symbol to proceed no symbol. And they want not the word to be the beginning, but they want the character and the symbol of the word to precede that. And that is how it is very obvious that in quantum AI, again, it used to be the binary choice. If it's X, Y, it was zero, one. But now we know that the infinite quantum possibility is as you judge, then things are fixed and your reality comes from that. The golden rule, treat others as you want to be treated. Gold being so powerful, but we know because of the Neolithic time that stone and the stone tools and the stone, everything survived longer than the Bronze Age and the Silver Age and the Gold Age because the idea that gold is power when indeed it's the everlasting power of stone that keeps it there. Look at the circles as we you want to present the circles in an order as they find themselves. Of course, you have the circle leads because it's the dot. It's the point of creation. It is the eternal and everlasting line. You can easily look at a triangle and see it to be what? Look at the bottom line. Is that not the balance of the horizon, the equal measure that we all see things? Are those angles not correct and right angles, each one of them preserving the power that keeps the triangle in its shape? Do you see the upright direction from the center of the horizon to the tip top of the triangle itself to show that the direction of the upright procession is how we shall receive reality? And if you exist in a curved fashion, if you exist in a lying fashion, then folks, your very nature is fixed in the deception. So your reality will also be based in that deception. From there, I believe, because, of course, we say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. If you looked at that triangle, the same way you'd look down a road, and the same way you'd look down a road, you would see that uh, it disappearing off into the distance. Of course, it would just be another triangle in itself.
Now, from our state of needing to the state of wanting, now we need to save things for ourselves. And here comes the square, which allows us to show what equal four equal lines, but then a placeholder to put things, be it a building, be it somewhere to keep things from people. Again, lucky, you know what, isn't it nice that walls work? And don't we learn that walls work as we see these insurgents trying to go after our very embassy? Nobody wants to have that conversation, but that is the reality. Do you think those people want your freedom? Do you think those people want your family to be healthy? No, they need you disarmed. They need you stupid. They need your po their food to be poisoned and your water to be filled with uh, chemicals so then to keep you as dumb as they need you to be. So you can vote in the disarming of America so the Communist Party can bring its war and culture and its body farming and its Yeagers in concentration camps and all the things that the mainstream media doesn't want you to talk about because the people doing the body farming and the people doing the human trafficking are the cartels moving the fentanyl in from China. Do you realize the human body is worth almost a million dollars if it's parted out? Does it not matter then what happens to the body before it's parted out? They don't care. You are nothing and we are nothing to them but cattle. We are nothing but a state. A, basically, we're a pick apart for human beings. And if there is that much money to be made, then you know then why they want us disarmed. So beyond the square, you're going to get the, uh, well, here comes the rectangle, which leads our Fibonacci sequence in which things are either ascending in a state of growth or they're descending in a state of, uh, well, I guess in a state of minimization. But even as it goes down to its most infinitesimal point, you still have infinity even in the smallest infinitesimal point because you'll always have a center. And it will always be an ability to, again, either ascend all the way up or descend infinitely. A lot of us say that in reality, go here to the, to the triangle here at the bottom, that we have a right-centered society. Now, as we've had quantum computing, running AI, going out into alternate realities to bring back the data, it's not bringing back their opinion of the data, it's bringing back the data in its entirety to be recasted here and to be sent back out to find more data. But again, it's not finding somebody's opinion of the data, it is only finding what is. And it is using a straight line approach. So if you see here, they know that the, straight, that the AI itself is finding truth in a straight line. If you know that the society in itself, because we feel that we're so liberal, we need to pull the society down away from the truth as it is, and they call that progress. When in reality, human beings, for the most part, are center right, and even that is not right enough based on the data that they are finding. And when it, this all comes down to as things are, then so you'll be, you see this S, the curve, be it the sacred serpent, or be it the base snake, be it the twisting of the helix inside of our DNA, that even our DNA has order itself and has procession itself. And nobody's here to doubt the DNA that we experience unless that's what's being commanded. So this is why they want to undo the Constitution and they're going to undo that by pointing out all of the ills by all of the genetic components that happen to make up the framers and the founders of this country because if they can demean them if they can demean their truth if they can demean the fact that they were all men or demean the fact that they were all white then that's just another chip of the constitution it's another chip of your first and second amendment rights beyond that they're going to go after the fact that they're not going to teach you cursive writing because you need to be able to read cursive to know what's on that document they want to show you that guns are bad because this is the document that says that we need them. They're going to say that your words must be taken away because it's going to be your very words that defend your faith in front of the people who want, will do anything by hook or by crook, any evil, any lie, any deception to take God away from you. See it for what it is. 
And down here in the corner, folks, this is Total War. And I wrote it in Chinese to the best of my inability to write Chinese, but according to Google, and who do they work for? This is what happened, folks. I'm going to break it down very simply to you. When they released the Donald Trump tape, the Access Hollywood tape, where he said, grab him by the whatever, and here comes Billy Bush, here comes the audio, all of a sudden, who is left in the room when this story hits? What's left in the room when this story hits is Rice Priebus, is Chris Christie, who was being groomed to be his VP, and Donald Trump himself. But his whole staff had left because they were now catching wind that this tape had been made known. And they didn't believe that he was going to be able to survive the excess Hollywood tape. And at that point, Priebus, Paul Ryan, and Mike Pence got together and said, what are we going to do? How exactly are we going to overcome this if he can't move on, if he's so damaged by this tape? And again, whose idea was it to float the tape? Call it for what it is. If all of a sudden they know exactly what to do, they were on the phone the next day, they were on the email the next day, talking to a web designer, how exactly do we get Pence Ryan 2016 website made. What do you want it on there? They start talking about the rule nine part of the RNC, which is how, what do you need to do to make sure that a, uh, that a person, if they're sick, if they've been killed or they decide to leave a campaign can be replaced. And rule nine in the RNC, much like that we learned about the rules in the DNC, how they're allowed to pick their own candidate, despite the fact that they have all these candidates running around and raising money, the DNC, per their corporate charter, is allowed to pick. Well, according to Rule 9 for the RNC, a, uh, a group of 168 people is allowed to decide then who their nominee would be, despite the will of the people. And they were looking in that, and while they were discussing Rule 9, while they were discussing this new website, they mentioned Scalia. And now we have to wonder why they would mention Scalia. We have to wonder why Paul Ryan and Mike Pence would be talking about perhaps the first coup, perhaps the first talk of violence. By hook or by crook, they need to maintain the order and the status quo. Does Donald Trump know this? Absolutely. Look at all of the people who are retiring. Look at all the people who are dead. Look at the 11,000 CEOs that have either retired. You know, you get that dope job as a CEO. Nobody knows why you make 3,500 times more than the average worker. And then all of a sudden, you're going to go off and get a new gig. All of a sudden, you're going to retire. 11,000 CEOs, folks, since 2017 is not an accident. Cummings is gone. John Lewis, gone. Dinkle, gone. McCain, gone. Bush 41, gone. They're going to try to hide it under natural deaths, but we all know what has been coming on since the beginning. That the Bush cabal has been running a 50-year crime syndicate to fleece this country. That every bit of aid that has left this country has been fleeced through NGOs and sent back through the campaigns. Your kid's future, your tax money sent to foreign countries where it doesn't even help the people who it's sent for. It's put into NGOs and it's stolen and the rich get richer and then they tell you that it's your fault for not trying hard enough. Beyond that, when all of a sudden the Pence-Ryan coup doesn't work out and Trump survives, well now they have a 48 hour period with comms where they've discussed something pretty nefarious and now that's not working. Well, here comes all of a sudden John McCain, and he's got the Steele dossier to push. They know that it started with Rubio and Cruz. They know that it started with Lindsey Graham. They know that it's just another weapon that they can use to damage and sell this Russian collusion. They need to sell the Russian collusion because they've already known that the crowd strike had hacked themselves and made it look like the Russians did it. So they can show back through the past, see, it's the Russians trying to help Trump. And according to CrowdStrike, it's true. And according to this dossier, it's true. Except the dossier shits the bed. 
Except we're going to find out when Assange finally gets in trial, whether he says anything or not. We're going to learn in the metadata of what he got that the information was not hacked over the air by Guccifer 2, that it was walked right through the front door of the DNC on a thumb drive by Seth Rich, who may be alive and telling you a story. And Jeffrey Epstein might be alive still and telling you a story. And all of these people that have all of a sudden met their quick end might all be under protection in the same protection that Assange is under because he needs to be here and he needs to be alive in order to preserve the data that he got to show you the metadata because inside of that metadata is going to be the fingerprints of how they got that information and also then because CrowdStrike is going to say who the hack was, you're going to see CrowdStrike's fingerprints all over their own data. According to the information I've read, we already have these servers. Donald Trump already knows that Pence and Ryan were out to get him. He already knows that Lindsey Graham and John McCain and Rubio and Cruz were out to get him. And some people have, as soon as they knew the jig was up, they retired. And some people have been forced to act and some people have said, oh shit, I didn't know. And now they're on board for Team America. And God bless them for doing what is right and maintaining a rule of law and maintaining order, maintaining, again, it goes from dark to light. It goes from beginning to ending. It goes from acceptance to rejection. The same people who want to sell you that two plus two equals five because somebody's opinion and somebody's emotion and someone who is demanding that their disorder be seen as order. And if you do not see their disorder as order, then you're labeled as the enemy. I wrote this in Chinese on the side and it is total war. This is total war against this country. And if you think that they're going to give it back to us, they're not. It's a 50-year crime syndicate, folks. Every bit of aid. There's been graft from the neocons, from the right and the left, and it's all been found out. Every bit of the comms has, has came, and they know exactly what the plan has been. They know that the people who've been involved in rigging elections are still rigging elections. They know because they've been caught and they were allowed to continue to do it. When this whole trap gets sprung, and it will get sprung, it is going to absolutely shock the world. When, you, when they show you how obvious this is, the same people, now mind you, when the Steele dossier doesn't work out, and Mueller, who knows the second that he arrives that there is no crime, but then somehow takes his, uh, his investigation up to two years and $35 million in order to find nothing, well then who comes in next? It's Schiff, and he's got the information but from the beginning, but he's lied. It's Pelosi, and she's got the information in the beginning, and she lied. Biden's kid, Pelosi's kid, both on the board of Burisma. Here's a picture of McCain and Lindsey Graham with white nationalist fighters of Ukraine that Obama paid racist white nationalists in order to be part of the coup. The same people who founded the coup in Turkey, the same people who founded the coup in Ukraine are the same people who founded the coup here, which is still happening, which is why Nancy Pelosi thinks that she can hang these articles of impeachment over us without having to send them because it does not matter if they win or lose. It only matters that they break the Constitution. It only matters that they do something dastardly so that in response, something dastardly is done and they, they can cry foul. They know what they're doing. They know that the breaking of the process norms, they know that weakening the president and the executive office itself, that breaking the Senate, breaking down the Congress is what is necessary in order for the communists who are working with the jihadis, who are working with the CCP and the PLA, running influence and economic operations in order to take away our sovereignty, have all been working together with the same funding sources, foreign and domestic, to take over this country. What's written there in Chinese is total war. And that is ultimately what the plan is. Because in total war, folks, if the Chinese end up being the communist power that is running this planet that just like we know as people of faith in the beginning was the word no not according to them in the beginning was the symbol that is what the word means do you see the reversal of that and now you have a government that says not only can you not believe in god no longer do you have your freedom you don't even have the freedom to have an opinion of the symbol 
that we might just change right in front of you. It's a battle for your command line. Those of you who are involved in uh, conspiracy theories and uh, all of this, you know, gnarly whatever, understand that in your in your in your search for corruption, take care of your corruption within because as we experience in the external we are also experiencing in the internal remember the forgiveness has to lead because as you forgive you will be forgiven so we have to forgive ourselves of our own trespasses and then we will be forgiven but that's only for the folks on our team those only for the the people here in the united states of america who know that no matter what they do, or they're going to be called sexist, racist, Islamophobes, or dumb, or rubes, or whatever these blue check liberal elites want to call you to demean you because they think that you're cattle. You're just on a million dollar body farm waiting to be parted out. You're just another mouth they have to feed. You're another person who owns a home that they need to take away, even the idea of ownership. And it was going to be a long range plan and it was going to take longer than this. It was supposed to be Hillary winning, running another eight years, handing it off to the next, you know, the next liberal leader who then cements the final plan. And now they got caught, which is why you go from everything is speeded up. It went from we need common sense gun control to now we're going to take your guns. That's how fast it goes. That we have to be, we have to be open to the fact that people believe that there are, I don't know, however many genders and sexes that they believe that there is, that there is no binary, except when you look at it, they're only moving from and to. Indeed, there is only a binary. And if you don't believe in what they believe, then again, you're the enemy, you're to be removed, you're to have your very freedom to be able to have an opinion or to say that no that is disorder and the disorder is somebody forcing forcing their disorder upon you those of us in faith know that the journey that we've made from our worst to our best has been a point of having to come to the point of fully accepting Christ's divinity fully accepting the forgiveness and from that point you have well what do you have you have this new beginning you get this new wineskin. It's not an accident that I'm telling you this on New Year's Eve. And that ball's going to drop and that time is going to set over. And whether you're looking at a million dollar ball with, uh, you know, ABC's shit coverage with uh, CNN's talking heads telling you how to live as the ball drop or if it's a dead possum that you're no longer allowed to use because it's bad for the animal community, the time's going to change. And on that time when that clock strikes midnight, you are going to have a new now. And that new now is the same light shining upon you from the darkness of your sin as that light crested upon the horizon of your reality. So much so that it was undeniable that that risen sun in your life, that risen sun in your reality exposes all things. And from that point of exposition leads our very action which is forgiven, forgiving so we can be forgiven. And remember, we're going to be judged on how we love, not judged on how we judge. And again, we know who's on our side, and it's people of faith across the religions, all the religions. Again, just because there are jihadis who believe that because you're not Muslim, you should be killed, that is not a reference to everybody in that religion. Just because you're a Chinese person does not mean that you are part of the Chinese Communist Party or the PLA. Just because you are, uh, just because you're part of a cartel, that doesn't mean that all Mexicans are bad. We're running into a situation now where you're going to put together the jihadis, the cartel members, their fellow resist, the gangs that are part of the cartel, and the Chinese subversives that are here on this plan, are here in this country, that are getting sources funded foreign and domestic who want to take your sovereignty, our sovereignty as citizens, our constitution and our very, very lives away from your kids, the very breath from your body so they can sell your organs because you are worth more, a lot more dead to them than you are alive unless they've convinced you to be part of this debt program. 
where they sold you on an American dream, which we knew nobody could afford now. And we take these kids and we give them degrees that are nonsense and we fill them with so much debt that they can no longer live the life of joy that they shall be living. That we have kids that have been beaten down so bad from the system, they don't even see that it's possible to raise a family. They don't even see that it's possible to have home ownership. They don't even see the necessity to own a car because they live in an apartment they can barely afford over the retail establishment that they're forced to work in. They need everybody to come into the city centers. And the city centers are going to control, which is another reason why they want the Electoral College to come down. Every single part of this liberal agenda, this progressive project, this secular project is here to undo God. It's here to undo order. Because in the beginning, already existed the ending. In the beginning existed length, width, capacity, depth. It existed a point. It existed lines. It existed the mathematics. That existed order and the functions necessary in order to explain all things natural and the supernatural. And so as you say that you don't believe then there you've already you've stopped on that one procession point and now you're in a state of disorder. If you're living in a state of resistance or rejection, you're living in a state of disorder. If you never give to anybody and you only expect to get and you wonder why you never get anything, it's because you're not giving because you're living in a state of disorder. It's that simple and simplicity is that simple. In every place, in every part in your life, in every part in your past, you can look back and see the decisions that you made and the decisions and why you made them. Was it from a resistance standpoint? Was it in a unchecked, emotional, disordered standpoint? What is it about this disorder that makes people demand? Because in the demanding for disorder is people giving up their guns, is giving up their liberty, is giving up their God, and giving up the order because like Faust said, they want the deed to lead the word. Well, we know that the word leads against an enemy that doesn't believe in God, who wants the symbol to lead the word. And again, we know it's no symbol, and then it's symbol. I hope you enjoyed this ebook. I hope you enjoyed, uh, if you want to find uh, more information, johntoll.net. WeaponsGreatFaith.com is where you can find all of our um, merchandise for Pit Boss 2000 PC Death Squad. And uh, God bless you. God bless America. God bless our sovereignty here as American citizens. Buy guns. Buy ammo. Know your neighbor's names. And make sure we take care of each other and our people here first before we send money off through a criminal establishment because they want to steal it and they have been stealing it for more than 50 years and we know and it's coming to an end. God bless America.